I am live. Hello, my special tribe, you know, um, Love and Healing Ministries. Uh, whoever is going to watch later now, you know, it's just so uh, wonderful, um, my growth with this ministry and um, where the Lord is leading me to and all I am learning and all I'm able to share and all of that. So I'm just so grateful for all of that. Um, today is the 23rd of January. Um, I turned 43 on Tuesday, the 18th of January, 2022. Yes, so I am hopefully, yes, a year wiser, more knowledgeable and with more understanding, right? And um, so uh -huh, I embrace my whole self my name is maria banga and um, i'm a minister of the word right um god put this ministry on my heart in 2019 and i was dilly dallying with it and um, last year in november he convicted me and he said now you are ready to take this thing live and i was like ah papa no blah, blah. he's like no you are doing this and you're taking it on ig so here i am with it on ig and i already have like I don't know, 26 or 25 followers. Uh, really, for me and for God and what I know he put inside my heart, it's not going to be about the numbers and the fame and the fortune and the, all of those things, nada. It's going to be about the hearts that are touched, you know, people who feel the love and people who get healed because that is really what he wants for us. And uh, he says it in his word in Matthew, I think, chapter 11, as I said in the beginning, I don't, I, I don't know all of those things like off head like that. And I'm never going to pretend that I know all of that. And I don't want to impress anybody. I don't want to be like anybody. So I will just say what I remember. But don't take the, the Bible chapter and verse I give you um, just like that. And don't go check it up for yourself. Because, well, we are told, like even the Bible says, like, when you listen to something, go and study it. You know, go and check it. Don't come after the, the, the preacher or the messenger. Get the message, study the message for yourself, get the confirmation for yourself and stuff. But I know that the word says, come to me, all you who labor, who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And um, I went to God because I was heavy laden and everything. And he gave me my own special memory verse, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. And um, with that verse comes my healing. I started this healing series um, last week on the Wednesday, yes, so today is part two. It's probably going to be a three-part series, and then I'll move on to something else. But this ministry is really so much about my um, journey, and then gradually getting into other people's journeys to and with God, and how they got this wonderful love, love amazing, and how they found and keep finding all of this healing in this relationship work with god through jesus christ right um and by the power of the holy spirit so um i have this song which i wrote and i'm hoping to one day get into a studio to uh, produce this song and um, i have my personal prayer um so it's really been a journey with for, for me you know it's not just it did not start in 2019 it started long ago like when I was a child, but started getting more intense in 20, late 2014, 2015. I got, I got the verse in, in February of 2015. So by January, 2015, which is once more my month, right? I was born in January. I really started to feel this shift. Like you have to get more serious with God. You really, you have to be, you know, just, you know, it's not just going to be business as usual, you know, like, Maybe you go to church on Sunday, you listen to what they say there, and then you go out and then you do your own thing, and then you go back the next Sunday. No, that was not it for me, and that is still not it for me. So um, I'm going to sing, you know, and I'm going to say a little prayer, and then I'm going to minister sharing, um, you know, from my book, No More Playing Russian Roulette with God, because this is a book that I was using and I will use until the end. And probably my other books too, as the Spirit leads me. This is not that ministry that wants to be like whichever ministry. It's just for people who are just, you know, just like me, ordinary people, just finding their way 
and just walking into all of this amazing grace and just being so grateful for all of that and um, you know still struggling in some areas and surrendering some and all of those kind of things so yes my song he changed my story his name is jesus christ son of the living god he changed my story la 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 like mary i sought him like simeon i honored him like madala i loved him like paul i serve him la 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 oh my sisters oh my brothers let me tell you of this great jesus if he change me he can change you so don't you worry la 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 he loves you plenty he gives you plenty he needs you plenty he heals you plenty and we need that healing you know i need you every hour we need him oh i need you every hour i need you like what can we do without his love and healing right what can we do without and so that chapter uh is entitled i am not bargaining with god again and um the verse this chapter starts with is actually that my proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 so i'm just going to say a verse of my prayer or the beginning and let's see how it goes right dear god today and always please grant me the serenity and discernment to choose what better leads to your deepening your life within me may i hold myself in balance at all times ever aware and fully conscious of your marvelous masterpiece of creation in me you search me and you know me you love me and you forgive me you need me and you lead me all i ask is for the grace to always seek to know and do your will in every circumstance with total gratitude may i be able to always put on your armor to generously be an inspiration and motivation to those you put on my path with my experiences in your merciful and everlasting way counting on mary's intercession today i lift up my prayers to christ my lord amen okay papa so that said that prayer made thank you so much and um I want to read from uh, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. I know many people probably know this. It's just a wonderful, wonderful passage. So assuring and reassuring of all the healing we need, frankly speaking. Because sometimes we don't get it because we are hanging on so much to our own reasoning, thinking, perspective. La, 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 la. But when he gave this to me, it's true. I struggled some and stuff. But it's kind of at the back of my mind. And it actually helps me a lot. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make straight your paths. Amen. You know, um, sometimes we, we hurt so much because we want to make sense of it. Like why why did this person leave me why did this marriage not work out why did my brother die why 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 did my parents separate why 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 and then well we try to figure it out figure it out on our own we try to make sense of it our own way we try to do it our own way 
Because of course, there's so much the world tells us about being able to do it on your own. Like you gave birth to yourself. Like you just showed up in this world on your own. And you can take yourself out, right? Wrong. So what is this whole thing about trying to do it on my own? Trying to understand it. Trying to figure out. I was that kind of a person, you know, like seriously, seriously. Until November last year when I was like, Papa, I'm, I've had enough. But I wrote this book in 2020. So even though I published it in 2020, I was still trying to do some small part on my own. Yet I had written this chapter. I am not bargaining with God again. Uh, I was not clearly bargaining, but I was still stubborn. You know, and I used to pride myself with this thing of, I'm, I have stubborn but passionate faith. Which one is stubborn? Which one is stubborn faith? Hey, you this girl. Seriously. If you really want to surrender to God, you cannot afford to be stubborn. Seriously. So I have read myself of that and I continue reading myself of that. Actually, I'm on this abstinence recommitment journey because I want to really, really work on my flesh and tell this flesh, you will submit. There's nothing like stubborn. There's nothing like God will understand if I have just this little, little sin or little transgression or little something. Eh, eh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Forget about body. Forget about all of those things. And if you want to be healed by God, then come on now. Offer everything to him. It doesn't mean you'll never struggle, but let him at least see your efforts. So, when you have had the kind of life I have had, you quickly come to realize, uh, it was not very quickly for me anyway, God is not done with you yet, but then I did realize that. You admit to being a mere mortal, and yet you know you are here for a purpose, and you definitely can't fulfill that purpose without God's constant grace. In short, I am not bargaining with God again. It is really indeed one of leaning not onto my own understanding but, it, but in everything acknowledging god and doing more of that at this point in my life when i was just like settling i had settled into my own home i had doubled some more in relationships i had gone to some church and been spiritually abused I was losing faith again in God and in the world and in humans and men in particular. And yet I love them, you know, like I want to be married. I want to be in a relationship with the man. I want to have a family, a whole healthy family, you know, and stuff like that. But I, 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 I cannot figure that out on my own, you know. So um, I said, God, please do something and show me that you are with me through it all and i want to tell you i had lost so much weight i was like a scarecrow i have a picture of before and after i look at that picture before i would cry when i look at it and when i share that thing on social media people are like no this is not you in the span of a year i had gone down like to nothing like the drain could be felt through my spirit to my body everything was cranky i'm not cranky anymore i'm healthy and then it took me another year to get back to physically healthy spiritually on the path emotionally everything but then it still took me another year to get onto this journey and that was really my healing journey in this path that is why I really believe that God wants me to be using this book to know that although I wrote this book in, uh, I started in 2019 and I published in 2020, what I wrote then is manifesting now, is helping me now, is guiding me now in my healing journey. So as I share this with you, it's not necessarily where I am right now, no, but it's where I was and it's what helped me, you know, with the hope that, well, somebody kinds of sees with that and says let me try god and completely like let me surrender it all to him you know just that song i surrender do you really surrender all or you're just singing and vibing and humming but when it's time to surrender all you know uh, no, I, 
I mean, you know, like you, you say, I will not drink again. Father, help me, but and then okay, I'll just take one bottle. So God will understand. Understand what? He will understand that you understood that disobedience can get you to anywhere. Why well, we go round and round and round like that? And I did go round and round and round. But when I realized last year. Maybe also thanks to the pandemic because it slowed me down busy. I'm still busy, but I, I was super busy before the pandemic and everything. And then I took time, you know, I dared to look inside and not outside, which is something I had, I had looked at recently. And um, I started to go on all of these different spiritual journeys and to just withdraw more into myself and just forget about the noise out there and what people think and say and do especially with regards to me and my work to and with God and all of those kind of things. Then I started feeling that shift, you know, the shift that you feel when you are getting healed from something. Seriously, people might not feel it. People might not say it. People might not acknowledge it, but it doesn't mean that it's not happening and that it will not continue to happen as long as you fear not. And that was my word this morning with my... Um, you know, these daily vlogs um, about my abstinence with commitment journey. The word was really fear not. Like and, um, a sister of mine gave me the passage. She said, First John 4 verse 18. I hope I have it right. But let me at least check that one up, right? Um, thank God for my Kindle. I can quickly go find it. First uh, John We have to get we have to get there if we don't get there where we surrender and we just trust and we walk in that it's going to be really difficult for us so what does first john 4 verse 18 say let me be sure she gave me the right one i think so okay so um there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. I can also add, has not been healed, fully healed, healed by God. You know when doctors say we cure, but God heals. I'm a psychotherapist, and I tell people, well, I can help you get started on your healing journey, you know, by grace and all of that, but God is the ultimate, even me like that, <laughs> I need that God, though. so... I cannot even tell you that I have solutions for you. I can only direct you. I can only help you unpack. I can only give you, you know, those tools. But you have to do that work yourself. You have to go and seek the face of God. Because when you seek his face, you are going to find his face. And he's going to be pleased and he's going to come in you with his father and the spirit. And they cannot come into somebody who is not healed, so broken and everything. If they start coming, it's to help you to become whole. So that when they fill you up, you radiate their presence. You, are, you become that light. That light that cannot even be hid under any table. Because even if you light a lamp and put it under the table, it will still shine. So your own light is the kind that will be put on top of the table. And everybody around is going to see that light. So what I want to talk about my journey today as I conclude this message is that it's been a very interesting one and it's one that I, I, I don't even want to shut up about. I don't want to be ashamed about. I don't want to ever stop talking about. I don't want to just make like, nah, I was born and just holy and uh, uh, uh. I had this beautiful journey. You know, like Paul's journey, right? So did that stop him from becoming Paul and writing like, half of the New Testament and going all over the place and all of those things. No. So it doesn't matter if you are still on the road to Damascus. It doesn't matter if you are still persecuting. It doesn't matter if you are still uh, making fun and say, oh, those Christians, those church goers, those this, those that. Eh -eh. If you, you, because sometimes you can be doing that on the outside, but on the inside you are bleeding, you know, and you want God to help you. At the same time, you will not even acknowledge him. Please. Stop today. You can stop. Do not lean on your own understanding. Stop trying to figure it all out on your own. You know, and in all your ways, acknowledge him. And there's this assurance. He will make your path straight. So I was reading all of these things all along and thinking that it was a joke. 
But when I surrendered completely, like even my flesh, I'm like, Father, I don't want to have sex again. Father, I don't want to be in a relationship again if it's not about you, if you are not in the middle. I don't want, I don't want, like, Father, I'm prepared to fast for as long as you want. Just so that I give it all up to you. It has just been wonderful. Like, it has been exceedingly and abundantly. So when I would talk to you about the third part of my healing, I would tell you where I am right now. And you're going to see how wonderful my journey has been. It is it is still go ongoing. And it's only getting more wonderful. Like, oh my goodness, the gifts I received for my birthday. This birthday was the best ever. And I didn't expect it at all. I even received a human birthday present. And I'll talk about that um, on Wednesday, right? So it, it is it is so beautiful to be in the Lord's presence. And He is a deliverer. So it is wonderful. Let's keep waiting on Him. Let's keep waiting. That, that There's just so much beautiful um, praise and worship and all kinds of things in His atmosphere, this serenity and everything. But, ah, Father, the way you healed me, so many other people need this. They need it, Father. Please, Papa, help your children all over the world, especially those who are connected to me and who will watch and who will listen and who will be like, ah, if you did it for Mark and you still do it for her, you can do it for me too. Just open your mouth and just confess that Jesus is Lord. Just say, Papa, I surrender it all to you. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Thank you so much, Lord, for using me. Thank you for all these wonderful opportunities to minister. Thank you for my amazing um, abstinence with commitment journey. And above all, thank you because I'm going back to the mountain tomorrow for three days with this special um, request and project. You've put me on again. And you know how I love going to the mountain. So, And I know you're waiting for me. I'm so grateful for it all. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday, everybody. And yes, God bless us all.